Hello and welcome to episode three of the Monday Night Review. Um, I've been waiting for a couple of hours for my husband to take the children out so that I have a quiet house, as quiet as one can have in London. And we have a police helicopter that has been circling for the past 20 minutes. It always drives me bonkers, but if you can hear a helicopter in the background, there's not a lot I can do about it. I have looked on Twitter can't see what it is. Usually there's some exciting news update. I haven't got one for you. There's just a random helicopter. Um, updates as and when. Maybe it's a, an escaped murderer. I hope not. My kids are in the park. But today, um, so last episode we had the lovely Gemma Bray telling us all the spooky stuff that's happened. Well, not all the spooky stuff that's happened. She seems to be a bit of a spook magnet. But thanks for your lovely feedback on that. I have got more guests lined up. Oh, here comes the helicopter again. Um, But today we're going to talk about someone who is just, as soon as I saw, I think um, I first saw her mentioned on Instagram. There's a very cool Instagram account called History Cool Kids, I think it's called. I'll double check and put it in the show notes. But they mentioned this lady and I thought, oh my God, I have to find out more. She's really fascinating. How have I never heard about her before? So that is what we're going to talk about today. She's called Marianne Brown Patton. If you have heard of her, awesome. Um, I'm really disappointed myself that I haven't. But she's one of those people that makes you feel uh, like an underachiever, but also you spend quite a lot of this story wincing because it's not an easy life. So here we go. Mary Ann Brown was born on the 6th of April in 1837 to a reasonably wealthy Boston family. Um, And in 1853, just before her 16th birthday, she married 25-year-old Joshua Adams Patton, a captain ferrying cargo from New York to Boston. In 1854, when the original captain fell ill, Patton was offered the command of the Neptune's car. He was reluctant to leave his young wife so early in their marriage, um, so the owners granted permission for her to join him, which I think is highly unusual. I haven't done loads of research into women on boats, but I'm pretty sure they're not thought of as a great thing. So they boarded the ship 12 hours before setting sail. Just off the bat, I think she's fairly brave. I don't. I'm, I'm coming at this from a from a not a boat lover perspective. Um, but how old must she be? She must be nineteen, eighteen. Um, so off off they go. So over the next seventeen months, they sailed to San Francisco, China, London, back to New York, and Mary passed the time learning navigation. She was one of the few people on board who could read. Not everyone had the privilege of being able to be taught to read and write and assisting her husband with his duties as captain. Uh, For those of us who don't, who aren't boating folk, um, Neptune's car is a clipper. And I'm always, I always read about this, a clipper. And I'm always like, yeah, yeah, it's a boat. But I thought I'd look it up. It's a mid-century, mid-19th century merchant sailing vessel that really, the boom for clippers happened around 1843 so this story is taking place in 1830 in 1854 so um it's kind of the boom time for clippers um and it's specific at this time because that's when demand for tea from china grew and delivery needed to be quick so clippers are narrow for their length making them really fast but they have limited space for bulky cargo so They're great for transporting tea and rice, which can be made really compact um, and tea needs quick delivery. So the name clipper probably comes from the term clip, meaning to go swiftly. And for those UK dwellers, the Cutty Sark, famous Cutty Sark, uh, which you can visit in London, is an example of a clipper. Um, My husband is is a boat fan. And he thought it was also number of sales specific, but it seems not. It's more to do with the narrowness versus length and therefore the speed of the boat. So the Neptune's car had a reputation for speed, 
And on the 1st of July, 1856, along with two other clipper ships, the Intrepid and the Romance of the Seas, Neptune's car left New York, once again with Mary on board. I think it's really sweet that... I know that sounds patronising. It's not intended to be patronising, but I have a feeling as much as as much as my husband loves me that if they if he was offered to uh, go on a boat, <laughs> I would be staying here. Um, I think it's really sweet that um, they obviously had a lovely relationship that they wanted to stay together, despite it being um, no place for a woman. And I say that not because the women are weak, as we're about to find out, but because there wouldn't have been a lot for her to do on board. I don't think the conditions would have been particularly pleasant and more geared towards an all-male crew. Um, she's obviously away from the rest of her family and everyone she knows. So um, I just think it's really lovely that they, they want to be together so much that she goes with him. Um, and so they, they leave New York with these other two clippers. And as is common for the time, a friendly race is to take place. So what would happen is uh, boats would set off at the same time heading for the same place, obviously um, from different companies with different cargo on board, and there would be bets placed on who would get there first. So this made speed a greater priority than usual. Um, But not long into the journey, Patton found that the first mate was sleeping on the job, tying up the sails. He was basically doing lots of weird stuff at night um, when he was supposed to be on duty. and Pat believed it was to slow down the progress of the boat. So he was locked up. Um, Pat believed that he was po- possibly placing bets on a competing vessel and therefore trying to lose the race for the Neptune's car. The second mate was illiterate and he couldn't read and he was unable to navigate. So Patton, who hadn't been feeling well when they left, um, was forced to perform both duties um, as captain and first mate. So from what I can tell, again, not a boat person, but uh, first mate, I think, basically does the night duty. You're captain at night, um, making sure the ship stays on its course and doing what it needs to do so that the captain can sleep. So basically, patterns up day and night um, and does this for five days straight. But when uh, Neptune's car is at the foot of Cape Horn, uh, Joshua Patton lapsed into a coma from what would later be believed to be tuberculosis. So when the first mate is, the first mate's locked up and untrustworthy and the second mate's unable to navigate, Mary Patton is the most qualified person on board to bring the ship safely into port. Remember, she, was, she, she studied navigation. She was on board for 17 months the first time. And during that time, she just hung out with her husband while he was being captain. So she learned navigation, all the stuff that you need. Um, She also happens to be pregnant at the time. So unbeknownst to anyone but her and her husband, when she boarded the ship, she was pregnant. The last thing I want to do is be on a boat when I'm pregnant. So she takes over the ship. And in her spare time, she reads medical journals so she can nurse her husband. She's 19. See what I mean? feel very much like an underachiever. Uh, the first mate tries to persuade her to let him out and she refuses. She, she says if, he's, if her husband doesn't trust him, she doesn't trust him. Um, when she refuses to let him out, he writes a letter to the rest of the crew trying to incite them to mutiny. He says that they shouldn't be, um, it, you know, have a woman in charge and they should aim for Chile to get help. Mary, however, wins the crew over. It just speaks volumes about what what an incredible woman she is. They they agree that she should continue to captain the ship um, in her husband's absence or until until he's better. So Joshua regains some strength, um, gets up, takes over, lets the first mate out to resume his duties, but then finds that the, the first mate's attempted to divert the ship. Now, the ship is has a three hundred thousand dollar cargo. So I looked it up. Three hundred thousand dollars in eighteen fifty seven. Is that when we are? Eighteen fifty seven is worth nine point two million. So these ships were renowned for having a lot of money on board. They had uh, you if you were asked to captain the ship, it was a big deal. Um, so 
he gets locked back up and Joshua lapses back into a fever. So Mary just continues to captain the ship. She apparently says she did not change her clothes for 50 days. She literally just captained and nursed her husband. Uh, He had really bad fevers. At one point, she had to shave his head to try and reduce his temperature. So when they arrive at San Francisco, Mary's offered assistance to get the ship into port, which she refuses. She sails the Neptune's car into harbour herself, and she comes second. She beats all but one of the ships in the race. So, you know, not only has she done what many people would believe that a woman wouldn't be able to do, she did it while she was 19, she did it while she was pregnant, She's just an instant celebrity. Um, She's officially the first woman to command a ship. She's 19. She's six months pregnant, so she's visibly pregnant by the time she arrives. Um, The ship's insurers are so impressed with her because, obviously, if if the mutiny had happened or they'd lost the cargo, that's a lot of money. Something's just gone bang downstairs or upstairs. It's the puppy. Oh, my God. So I heard this massive bang. And then this weird noise, and I thought, oh my God, someone's breaking into the house. But in fact, it's the puppy breaking over the baby gate. Um, so yes, if she'd lost that £9.2 million worth of cargo, it would have just been awful. So um, they, the ship's insurers give her a $1,000 reward. In today's money, that's £30,900. And when asked about it, she says she was only doing the plain duty of a wife towards a good husband. So they return to, so they've landed at San Francisco. They return to New York. Um, Joshua was alive. She's credited with keeping him alive um, on the journey, but he is seriously unwell. He's a Mason. So the Masons come and, and help him, uh, help them get back to New York. It's a really long trip. And then they have to go from New York to Boston. Um, And two weeks after they arrive, Mary gives birth to their son, Joshua. So, yeah, though she's credited with keeping her husband alive during the the voyage, his health is so deteriorated that by the time his child is born, um, he's deaf, blind and completely incoherent. And he just never knows about the birth of his son. Joshua Patton dies um, in July 1857 at the age of 30, by which time his wife, Mary, has already begun having fevers. And on the 18th of March, 1861, just four years after losing her husband, Mary Ann Brown Patton dies of tuberculosis just before her 24th birthday. Though their son survives his parents, he never marries and dies of accidental drowning at the age of 43. The whole story is both mind-blowing and tragic to have achieved so much by the age of of 19. And I know it's a different era. Like, she got married just before her 16th birthday. That doesn't really happen now. But I just, I love the fact that they clearly loved each other. Um, He was obviously a really nice guy, the husband. As I said, it's a big deal to be asked to captain one of these clippers because the the sheer expense and the cost of the cargo on board. So he was obviously really trustworthy and she went through so much for him. But what a complete badass of a woman to to just deal with that first mate, deal with the possible mutiny, navigate the ship, deal with the side effects of being pregnant and nurse her husband. Just such an incredible woman. Um, and I, it, yeah, so 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 tragic that she she and her husband die so so early. Yes, I really want to talk about it because she's so incredible, and um, I hadn't heard of her before, and her story is just amazing. So uh, do send me a message if there's someone you want me to talk about, or a case that you want me to cover, or loads of people seem to be keen for paranormal stuff, which I love. What is your local spooky story? I think the next story I'm going to do is one that I've been fascinated with for at least 20 years because it's it's just down the road from where I grew up. So I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your badass women stories as well. Just She's just so incredible. 
And thank you so much for listening. And I will speak to you on the next episode. And until then, be safe, be kind, and always check the back seat before you get in the car.